Hello and welcome to Chess with Simon. I'm Simon and this is Chewy. Smelling my finger. Um, we're about to go for a walk. But before we do that, we are going to travel from beginner to grandmaster. So if you're a beginner, this video is for you. If you're an experienced player, this video is also for you because what I've found is that coming to chess with a beginner's mind, in other words, just coming to it with a very open mind and starting again, has really helped me actually uh, understand and enjoy the game. So we're going to start from the very basics of chess, thinking through the different openings uh, and everything like that, and we're going to do it through the games of the very best players in the world. And we're going to start from a game between Wesley So and Levon Aronian. So let's take a look at this game. So we're going to imagine we were just starting the game. And we're going to start with three basic principles. We're going to say in the opening, our job is to allow our pieces to develop. Our job is to get our king to safety and um, to control the center, to place our pawns in the center. I'll remember those three. I can remember three things. OK, so uh, let's have a look. So if I were white looking at this board, I would say the most natural move is to move my king's pawn two squares forward, pawn to e4. This is a great move because what it does is it allows the bishop to get out, which starts to prepare my king for kingside castling. It allows the queen to get out and also it controls the center. It controls the squares, the two central squares, d5 and uh, d5 here and f5 there, and uh, the pawn occupies the center. So this is a really good move. And so black very naturally copies that. Black says, right, I'm gonna get my king's bishop out, uh, and I'm gonna control the square d4 and the square f4 with my pawn. And again, this would also let the black queen out. White um, moves the knight to f3, attacking the e5 pawn, making way for the king to castle. This again just must be a good move. It's attacking a pawn, it's developing a piece, and it's starting to make way for the king to castle. Black defends the pawn. Again, it develops a piece and defends the pawn. There are other ways to defend the pawn, like moving the queen's pawn forward one, pawn d6. Uh, but black chooses to defend the pawn. I mean, I think there's a general rule that they say develop knights before bishops, although, uh, like many chess rules, it can be broken for instance, in the bishop's opening. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Right now, we're just starting from the beginning. Let's defend the pawn with the knight. White then develops the king's bishop, puts it on a really good square, attacking the weak point, f7, or the king's bishop's pawn. So this pawn is a weak point because it's only defended by the king. And if you can land a knight on it, you fork the queen and the rook. So this pawn is a good target. And the bishop's coming out to a really good square where it can attack this pawn and also white's preparing to castle. Black does the same thing. Black develops the bishop to uh, c5, attacking this and also actually stopping pawn d4 because now there are three uh, pieces covering d4 and there would only be two defending it so you can't play d4. After bishop c5 you can't play d4. This is significant because if black had played bishop e7, you can play d4. Now white plays a funny looking move, pawn c3. Now it looks like this does not uh, develop a piece and does not increase control of the center, but actually c3 uh, looks like a bad move on these terms, but it's making way for a really good move, which is pawn d4. So it's preparing pawn d4. Black develops the king's knight and attacks that pawn on e4. This is a good, sensible move. Now white has this move, pawn d4, and all of a sudden d4 is defended by 1, 2, 3, and attacked by 1, 2, 3, so this is fine, this is correct, it doesn't lose any material. And white's plonked a pawn in the center with tempo, because it's attacked a bishop, and letting this bishop out. So this d4 is a really good move. Black takes, white takes back, so now white has done this with tempo, but also black moves there a check. So black's sort of moving with tempo as well, and then white blocks it, um, attacking the bishop. So very natural for, for black to take, white to take back, developing the knight. So white's developed the knight, but perhaps not to its very best square. 
its very best square would have been c3, which is this square. d2 is okay, and d2 is good because it defends the e4 pawn, but c3 would have been better because c3 would have stopped black's next move, which is pawn d5. So, because if the knight had been on c3, there'd have been three pieces, including pawns, covering the d5 square, so that would have stopped d5. But now black can play d5. So everyone's playing like really good moves here. This is really, you know, good logical play. White takes it, sort of has to take it. I mean, you could consider bishop d3, but sort of has to take it. Black takes back with the knight, can't take with the queen because it'll lose the queen. Takes back with the knight. White then makes the very natural move, queen b3. So it's attacking that knight twice on d5. But before white has time to play that, black plays knight to a5, forking the queen and the bishop, so attacking both the queen and the bishop at once. So if white took here, black would take white's queen. So the queen really has to move, and queen can move there with check, which is a fork on the knight and the king. So white meets black's fork with another fork. Black puts the knight in the way, thus saving the knight, and then white just renews the attack on um, the knight on d5. So black plays the fork again, so white plays the check again, so black puts the uh, knight in the way again, so white goes back here. And the game ends because the position has been repeated three times, and so this is a drawn position. So this was a game between two of the <laughs> the greats of the chess world. And you might say, well, where's the excitement? Where are the thrills and spills? And the answer is, we're starting slowly. We're starting with logic. We're going to go on a journey. We're going to search through the whole of chess and all of the openings and all the discoveries. I mean, it's going to be magnificent. We're all going to become great players uh, on this journey. But we're starting with this one. And I'm going to leave you with some questions. And I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. The first question is, white has ended up with a draw. So probably, mathematically, chess is a draw. But white doesn't want to settle for a draw, right? White wants to try for more. So what could white have done, although all of white's moves were logical, what could white do to try for more? Now, it may be the case that white just needs half a point to win a massively important tournament, so it may be that this suits white. But still, mathematically, we should know what white can do to look for more. Because the onus is on white to try to win. Um, and in the same way for black, I mean, black's achieved a draw. That's great news, because black's always trying to equalise in chess. But if black was a massively high-rated player, black might want more than a draw. So another question is, what could black have played that's still correct to keep the game going. How could black have kept the game going, kept the game interesting, and avoided this early draw? Um, and maybe black's in the final round of a tournament and just needs a win. So black players need to know ways in which they can create games that are interesting and um, are gonna create chances for a win. We'll look at lots of these as we go through these games. But to begin with, this game took place between Wesley So and Levon Aronian in the Gold Money Asian Prelim. It's the same game has been played by many of the top players. They both knew what they were doing. The same game has been played by many top players over the year. Uh, it's completely correct, but it's also pretty boring. Fizzled out very quickly, but this is something we'll build on and look at in future videos. If you've got ideas about variations you'd like to cover and moves that interest you, then just let us know. I'm Simon, this is Chewy. I'm going to go and get Chewy so he can say goodbye. We're going to go for a walk now. Uh, it's been great to see you all. I hope you're all well and we will post a new video soon on the next line.